Okay, well, something a little different. Um, so firstly, I must say thank you to anyone um, who's joined my membership. Um, yeah, some quite interesting chats with different people on there, um, which is cool. So, um, yeah, I supply AC compressors. It's probably one of the most common things that I supply to other garages. Probably motors and AC compressors um, are the top two. Yeah, I probably supply more AC compressors. And they seem to fail at a fair rate of knots. But why? So what we're doing here um, is just separating the metal, basically, just trying to get the steel out of this aluminium um, and all the connectors off and everything, just so that basically um, we can recycle them and get the most value because the aluminium is more valuable. So these compressors have all failed. These are either ones I've taken off cars or I've picked up from garages just because it's interesting. So what's actually inside these AC compressors and what actually happens? So they... Uh, let's just move these bits and then I can show you it as it sort of is. So the compressor looks like this. It obviously normally has a couple of connectors on the top, comms connector and a um, high voltage connector. So this is a high voltage component. Um, obviously pipes, so there's one pipe connects over that side and one on here. And then this is the high pressure side. So it gets sucked in there from the low pressure side, pumped out here in the high pressure side. So under here, what you've got is this kind of module so this is the actual compressor part and what you've got inside here it's a scroll compressor so i think these things are quite cool really so you've got two scrolls which fit inside each other and what basically happens is this one is static and this one rotates so these fit inside each other like that and what basically happens is it turns like that and because the um, outer part of the scroll is bigger, so there's obviously more area in this section than there is in here, that basically causes the pressure to increase because it's pushing, as it moves around, it's pushing the fluid to the middle, increasing the pressure, and then pushing it out of that pipe. And in the air conditioning system, basically the high and low pressure sides are separated by the compressor, because that's obviously starting the high pressure part, and then there's what's called, um, very interestingly, called a fixed orifice. Basically just a restriction in a pipe, like a jet kind of thing. Um, so that you've got a little pinhole, so that the high pressure obviously builds up behind the jet. And then as the gas expands and shoots out, obviously expansion causes your um, temperature to drop. So that's quite a cool design. And this is rotating. And what I thought was quite interesting is all these compressors have failed. So although this you know, works, and I've seen um, sort of them, you know, pictures of them having broken up. We'll look at a few more in a second. Um, the compressor part on this one's okay, but this compressor has failed. So one of the common failures on these is isolation. So I mentioned it's a high voltage component. You can basically get a um, connection between the incoming high voltage. So this is your incoming positive negative, which has been chopped off, um, and the actual um, chassis. And that basically is the motor inside there so there's an offset pin so that spins round then there's this uh, counterweight that sits on here like that um and then that is pushing on yep yeah, this side and so that this circular part is offset so if we look in there you can just see that that's slightly towards the right isn't it there so as this spins as this spins round, this pin is offset, it's rotating this part, and that's causing that, that sort of motion. Yeah, it's causing it to do that kind of rotation. The other really interesting thing, um, at least I thought it was interesting, you can see these pins here. So they have got, I think we've tipped them all out, but they had little, oh, here they are, they've got these little, little rings on them and those rings sit inside here so that kind of guides the amount of rotation and it's kind of like oh you can see one there it's um oh, yeah just there so it's like a steel collar in the um that's interesting um yeah steel collar in the aluminium um and it, so it's kind of rotating and those pins those five pins are rotating inside here and that's kind of controlling it, i guess um interestingly on this one that yeah, that seems to be a little bit mashed up there. Let's just turn it out and have a look. That's why that collar's not come out. 
Yeah, interesting. I think that's damage rather than poor manufacture, isn't it? So yeah, it's common that you get an insulation fault. So you effectively have a um, a link between the power, the mains inside, and the, the mains, the um, the high voltage that's driving the motor, the high voltage that's getting into the motor, and the actual um, and the actual case, basically. Yeah. So um, other interesting features, and then we'll look at disassembling another one a bit more. So when it comes out. So the high pressure comes out of here. There's this sort of gasket arrangement. Sorry, I'm doing everything one-handed. I'm sort of covered in AC oil. Um, so yeah, this gasket sits over here. And I, I've i debated what this is for. So the top is like a firm, a firm, thicker piece of metal. And then inside, it's just like a shim. It's quite, um, yeah, quite flexible. And I think that is so that when your compressor spins up and builds some pressure, it can then stop and obviously if there was no if there was nothing like non-return valve type arrangement that pressure would just bleed straight back through the other side wouldn't it through the compressor and then it would have to build it again um i guess it's a bit like um you know when you're trying to pump up an airbed if it's got a non-return valve it's a lot easier because as soon as you stop blowing it obviously holds the air rather than it constantly trying to blow back at you and you stop blowing and it will come back out again so that's the kind of um yeah kind of um non-return arrangement interesting little piece of gauze there that and it's kind of hard to see but that is very fine mesh um i did actually talk to um, a company it's a couple of years ago now who were trying to build these ac compressors because they were such a common failure um, and they were actually really having difficulty making that gauze and um, that was one of the most difficult components apparently and that's what they said at the time so you can see how this has been machined can't you with a circular circular you know machine head going round same on this one quite well manufactured so the most interesting thing is i've taken these five apart i thought them breaking apart was quite common but it's only happened on this one so same same thing you take the end off and then this is the kind of module got some nice bearings in here these are all lubricated by the ac um oil so yeah so this one let's put this let's put them directly next bit for comparison so we've got the same parts here, and you can see this one has literally just fallen apart. So this is your classic failure. So these scroll parts have literally just come apart. The middle is all broken up. Um, I guess that they say it's trying to pump it the other way. So it's trying to pump it. Ah, so yeah, so the that it's actually pushing on here, isn't it? The actual force from the motor is on that center. If we grab this part so this is the the part that's actually trying to push it round isn't it so the pushing force is coming from that center so it's probably not a surprise that that's taken the brunt of it and then it's obviously locked up with all of this this parts of this compressor it's generated all this lovely stuff and um, which i'm just gonna wipe on a rag um yeah so this is your sort of classic failure i thought i thought they basically did this all the time that it was a physical breakup, um, but yeah, it seems like the the sort of insulation fault is not generally caused by this. So one of the things I have seen um, is I've seen this swarf, and there's a lot of it. You can imagine this; they spin really fast. This it's high pressure. Um, it's broken this up, and it can actually pump this up the pipe as it's as it's failing. And um, I worked on a Zoe with uh, Good Guys Garage in Rawrath in Essex. They were trying to diagnose. I even, oops, sorry, um, I even lent them a Zoe to Good Guys Garage to try and diagnose this Zoe. I lent them another car to swap parts over, basically. Um, yeah, and in the end, we worked out that the um, radiator inside the car was actually blocked by Swarf. So they'd put a new compressor on it. Put gas in it and when the compressor turned on it would actually vent the gas so these compressors have a vent uh, let's just grab one over on oh it's on the cap i think actually isn't it yeah sorry right here that is the overpressure vent and that activates because it's the details are on the sticker i just had to convert the units it activates at 35.3 bar which is 511 psi is the maximum so yeah, 35 bar, um, but yeah, I saw this Zoe vent 
because it was obviously pumping, trying to pump, but the pressure was just building in the end inside here. Um, and then it would just vent back out here and it would vent the gas. And then, um, yeah, in the end, we actually worked out there was a blockage inside and then actually got that changed. And then uh, it fixed the car. Not very common, but it can happen that all this swath, you can see it in there. Lovely, it gets pumped up the pipe just kind of as it breaks up. So it's kind of good to see that, that mechanical failure doesn't happen all the time because there is a concern that the, um, yeah, the, the sort of pipes get contaminated. The normal working pressure of these is still reasonably high, about 20 bar is a max, usually about sort of up to about 18. But I've seen a, I had a Zoe and it had really good heating, which is not that common for a Zoe. Um, but yeah, that would get up to about 22 bar, um, but normal maximum is about 20 bar, which is about 290 PSI. So still pretty high pressure. These compressors don't tend to last too long, hence I've got six in the line. But yeah, it is actually good to see that they don't all break up inside. Um, the downside of these compressors is when you get them breaking up or you get an insulation fault for some other reason, possibly from the pressure that the AC gas and oil is getting where it shouldn't, and um, possibly, you know, backwards into the motor. Yeah, you get that insulation fault. So you get effectively like a, what they call leakage or um, a kind of ground fault. So the high voltage system is connected to the car body when obviously it shouldn't, it should be fully isolated. And um, that can actually cause damage to the charging system on a Zoe. So the charging rectifier, if this happens when the car is charging, then, um, yeah, depending on kind of the sequence of events, it can damage the charging rectifier, which is kind of unfortunate, but just one of those things that happens. And it is therefore quite important with your Zoe to make sure that your AC system is kept kind of serviced. So if your heating or AC is not working, get the gas level checked, get it investigated. Similarly, if the compressor is noisy, so this compressor I've only just taken off and it was really rattly really really badly rattly um it had it had all the gas and oil in and everything but just really noisy um and i was really concerned that that it was starting to break up inside it looks like it hasn't broken up but there is quite a lot of it's quite dark in there so that makes me think that something bad is certainly starting to happen so yeah keep the system maintained um some people um, get a bit worried because it's quite noisy, the AC system. So you, these do generate a kind of jet engine turbine type whine. That's a normal noise from these. And you hear them spool up in steps. So you'll probably hear it if you put your AC or heat on, especially heat pump in the winter, heat pump mode, they're working quite hard. So you get that jet whine. Um, you'll know that when you hear it, but um, that's a normal noise. But if you hear any rattling or grinding, um, or if it's just not working as well as it should do, yeah, then first you get your gas level checked or it may be that the compressor is, um, is on the way out. Because obviously, as I said, persisting with it, you've got the potential to cause further issues like with the charging system. And then you've got to obviously fix the compressor, but also you've got to fix the charging. Um, and if you're incredibly, incredibly unlucky, you can pump swarf up the pipes and block it as well. So the other thing people say to me is, looking at buying a Zoe, I've heard the compressors can be a bit of a weak point and it can cause other issues when they break. Is there anything I can do to sort of check out the compressor when I'm buying the car? The downside, the sort of bad news really is not really. Other than checking that the system is working, so obviously if it's summer, you've got a nice cold AC. In the winter, you've got decent heat. Okay, the heat in a Zoe is never amazing other than that one car I had, which ran at really high pressure for a reason which I can't work out higher AC pressure than any other Zoe I've ever had. Um, but yeah, so it's got reasonable heat in the winter, good AC in the summer. The, the compressor is just making that whine noise, that normal turbine spin up noise. Um, you also get the radiator fans coming on, so you can really get quite a lot of noise from under the bonnet. But as long as there's no rattling or grinding, that's really all you can do, to be honest, or say to the owner, you know, have you had the AC serviced recently? That is really all you can do unfortunately so hopefully that was interesting i think these compressors are quite fascinating really they're quite they're quite impressive components that is so smooth you know that that sort of rotation it is a really really smooth operation these could sort of spin but then oh yeah see it locks up 
if you get too far the scrolls are obviously locked into each other but yeah that that it is really impressive yeah good to see obviously this one less so um but yeah all good fun all right well i'm going to keep sorting my metal and uh, any questions let me know yeah all right thanks for watching and i'll catch you later cheers